In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a panoramic drone location image for real estate. This is the final image we're gonna be creating today. I started by flying my Phantom 4 Pro approximately two to 300 meters from the property at 120 meters high. This is the legal maximum height drones can fly without air traffic control clearance. Once the drone was in position, I configured the camera to capture multiple images of 180 degree view. In this instance, a total of 21 images were captured. One of the reasons I like creating this type of drone image is because I can simply fit so much in the frame. Also, I find that when I'm out shooting, it's very hard to actually see the landmarks on the little monitor while I'm shooting. Using this technique, I go home confident that I've captured the data I need for the drone mission. In the next step, we're gonna be stitching our images together to create one extremely high resolution image. My software of choice is PT GUI. All right, so here we are in Lightroom with our 21 images. First of all, what I'm gonna do is hold, uh, click the first one, hold down shift, select them all. We're gonna go to the develop module. I'm gonna add a preset, it's called Enforce Effects Base. And all that does is change some tonal adjustments, some saturation and sharpening. Then our next step is we're gonna export them as TIFF files. So we go right click, export. And I've got a preset for this too. It's called 16-bit TIFF, same folder. So we're going to the same folder as the original files. We're gonna put it in a subfolder called TIFF, 16-bit. And then we're gonna change the file format to TIFF, the compression to none, and the bit depth is gonna be 16-bit. And the reason why I want it to be 16-bit is because uh, it preserves all the color details. So when we're editing it and doing all that, uh, later adjustments, it will sort of be more like a raw file rather than a JPEG. And um, we won't need the watermark, but I will turn on After Export, show in Explorer. All right, so there we have our exported files. We've got our 21 files there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag them off to another monitor. And then I'm gonna open PT GUI. I'm selecting selecting all 21 files and just drag them in there. Then we click Align Images. And uh, PT GUI has now created a preview of what our stitched images will look like. It's looking good to me, so I'll just close that. I'm gonna come down to the bottom menu here and create Panorama. And we're gonna change this to TIFF and I want it to be 16 bit again. And we're gonna do Compression None. And then we're gonna click Create Panorama. So this is the directory where I saved all the TIFF files and you can see PT GUI is actually just saving another image in the background, won't take too long. There and it's done. So I'll just go over to Lightroom, make sure we're in the library module. Looking good. So I'll drag that over to Lightroom. We're gonna re-import it again import and there we go we've got that in Lightroom so I'm gonna hit develop first thing I'm gonna do is crop it I'm gonna go for an aspect ratio of 16 to 9 I feel like that's a good aspect ratio that works well for um, these type of images I mean that's the same aspect ratio as a computer monitor and it work well on mobile phones too and we really want to try and get a wide view too so I think 16 to 9 is good unless you know whatever the client wants I'm gonna bring it down to be a bit smaller because in this instance I felt like it was just way too wide but one of the reasons why I like to shoot like this is now I have that leeway of sort of just uh, cropping and composing or in some certain situations I might nearly use the whole image if I've got say a landmark over here and a landmark over there. I'm trying to show in one shot, but this one, it didn't need to be that wide. So we'll just crop it somewhere around there. Click OK. And uh, so what I will do from here, just notice we're not getting any histogram right now, but never, never mind about that. 
But I do know that I want to bring my shadows up a bit. We'll bring our highlights down a little bit. Maybe we can give it a little bit more color. We can adjust our white balance if we need to. Our white balance will still be pretty good because this is a 16-bit TIFF. And so from that point, I want to right click, edit in Photoshop, and we're going to continue editing it. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the sky in this image. It was a, not a very nice day. It was nearly raining. Basically, by the time I had landed, it was raining, so it's been very bad weather in Sydney. So I'm going to bring it back. Cool. That looks good. I'm just going to bring this up a little bit higher. I like the horizon of this image. As you can see, it's splitting off, just matching the horizon of that image because you know, I just feel like the clouds look a little bit more believable in that situation. So that's looking good. So another trick that I, I like to do, the image looks a little bit dull because it was an overcast day. So in just for a second, we can turn that off. I will press Control J with duplicated the layer. And then what I'm gonna do is press Control L and that opens up the levels. I'm gonna crunch the whites up a bit. And what this is actually doing is it's increasing the exposure, but it's also increasing the contrast. So that's before and after. And you can see here, particularly that the sky is starting to blow out, but we're not really too worried with the sky because you know we've just replaced it. So, but that definitely makes our foreground look a little bit more bright, more colorful, just a little bit more polished. So we'll click okay. We'll bring our sky back in and you can see the before and after of what's that, what that is doing. To tape it, take it a step further, what I actually do in a lot of times is um, I will say create a layer mask. I hold down op, uh, sorry, hold down Alt on the keyboard, create a layer mask, and what's that? What that has done has now hidden this top layer. You can't see anything. So I make sure the uh, layer mask is focused, and then. I get a brush and I just start brushing in the areas that I want to be a bit brighter. So it doesn't really look like it's doing anything because my brush is set to a flow of eight, but this allows me to just really feather, feather it in. And just for an example, if one bit was a little bit dark and you know you didn't want to apply the, the levels adjustment to the whole layer, then you could now brush in certain areas. Maybe I just want to make the golf course brighter or something like that. And then if we look at the before and after, you can see that it's just very subtly working on that area. In this instance, I think just the whole adjustment worked quite well. So then we can just leave, bring those two layers together, turn in our sky, and look at that. The image is looking pretty good. So I will select all the layers, press Control E on the keyboard, and now we've got one image. So from this point onwards, what I'm gonna do is I've got a folder called Drone Icons, and this is something that I created a long time ago. And I'm just gonna drag this over to another monitor. And for what it's worth, these icons were actually created when, um, sorry, they were created and used on just a regular drone image that hasn't been stitched together like this. So when I drag this in, you can see the icons look very small. A little bit small for my liking. So what I'm gonna do is press Control Alt I, and this opens up the image size command. And you can see our image is huge. It's 10,000 pixels by 5,000 uh, high. That would be somewhere around 60, maybe 60 megapixels or something like that. It's, this is a large file. But what I'm gonna do is make it a bit smaller, somewhere around 7,000 pixels wide. That's something similar to what the drone would shoot with a single image. And there we go. So that's made it a bit smaller. So now when I bring in my icons, they're now they're a little bit more um, within proportion to the size of what I want. So we can put that over the house that we were shooting. We also have the golf icon there. So we can put the golf club there. We've got the beach. Definitely want to include the beach. North, North Cronulla Beach there. We've also got a, sh a shopping mall over here. I know this area very well, so I know where everything is, but in certain situations when I'm shooting in suburbs that I don't know that well, I'd be using Google Maps as an aid, as an aid to really try and help me um, 
find out where the landmarks are. So, so in this situation, the, the tag or the label needed to be corrected for the actual tag. So you can see here, I've just double clicked on it. That opens it up, it's a smart object. And then now it's got the correct label and so on. And um, I would just keep doing this until I've got all the, all the icons that I want. You know, we could put more in for here. Maybe there was a fairy here. Probably not in this situation, but you get the picture. And there you go. That's our drone image uh, pretty much completely done. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. I'm Harry, a freelance real estate photographer based in Sydney, Australia. Thanks for watching.